Hello everybody, this is my CZW review. I'll tell you why I'm doing more CZW reviews, because I'm getting a lot of good feedback from them. And uh, I enjoy doing them from CZW fans or Deathmatch fans. Uh, they get, whether I say a good thing about the DVD or a bad thing about it, um, they usually give me good feedback and they're happy that I'm doing these reviews. I've had you know, a couple nice messages from some people, um, which really encourage me to do more. Whereas if I do a TNA or a WWE review or anything like that, which will probably get more reviews than this, even though my CCW videos have been getting uh, quite a few views, uh, I get abused being called a mark for having a difference of opinion um, when it, when a lot of wrestling fans like to call CCW fans the stupidest fans. They're very supportive of me, and they um, even though they might disagree on something, they still respect my opinion on it. Um, okay, uh, first of all, I'll say this show was a good show. Um, the match listing should be in the side uh, but the first flaw I found with the format of the show is um, they usually have interviews after the show and I don't like that uh, and then they had some interviews at the start of the show and I thought that was a bit better but they went on for a bit too long it went on for about 10 minutes or so and I think they should do an interview uh, between or show a, a promo or an interview between every match uh, Ring of Honor does the same stupid thing um a lot of promotions do the same fucking thing, and it drives me nuts. I hate it. Because, it, you know, you don't get a breath between matches. It's just you see one match, then you get a, a, a thing saying, this is this match, and then you get that. And it's just non-stop. Some people might like it. I don't think you need to, to, to sell a, someone losing a match, or sell someone winning a match, or sell a storyline by having a promo after or before it, um, and, and between every each match, and it'll help out a lot. Um, having said that, let's just get straight into the matches. First, we had John Dahmer versus Joe Gacy. This was a this was basically a squash match. It was only about five minutes long. Well, say the crowd went nuts for this match, uh, and there was a lot of really good stuff in in that five minutes. Um, you know, and I saw a lot of things that I didn't think I'd see out of John Dahmer. Um, but yeah, this was a good good squash. You know, very good squash. Um, two and a half stars easily. I mean, it wasn't really a squash, maybe about, it was between five and seven minutes, uh, or five and ten minutes, but it was a short match, but it was very good. Next we had another short match, which was Dan Paisan versus Christian Haim, this was a good uh, air, uh, high-flying match, a bit spotty, other than that, it was short and it was good, uh, high-paced, uh, had, had some interesting things in there, uh, two and three quarters. Next we had Pinky Sanchez vs Spiral BKNY, this was also a, sh a short match, but it told a good story in the ring, uh, and subsequently outside of it, um, and they also put in a lot of good stuff, sold Pinky Sanchez as the underdog, uh, Spiral BKNY as the heel, did good work of that, good match, also two and three quarter stars. Um, next we had Vordale Walker vs Ricky Reyes, um, we had Ruckus come out and cut a promo with his jaw, no, Ruckus, um, Sabian, his jaw was wide shut so he couldn't speak. Uh, Vodell Walker came out and he was feuding with Joker last month. Now he's feuding with the whole Blackout and, and, and tried attacking him. Ricky Reyes came out and made the save, which led to a very short match, which was good. It showed Vodell Walker's um, in-ring ability and uh, but didn't really make Ricky Reyes look too weak in the process. And as I said, it was a very short match. And that's something that you always have to be careful if you don't make someone look too weak in the ring if you're having a short match so it was two stars um, <coughs> next we had Team Andrew vs Naptown Dragons this was supposed to be a CZW tag title match but Naptown Dragons said hey you had a tag title match a few months ago and you lost uh, so this therefore we're not giving you a title match it's going to be non-title um, if you can beat us then you'll get a title match Team Andrew um, got, got some uh, played the uh, I can't remember which one it was, but someone played the Face in Peril, did the whole tag team deal, Naptown Dragons were getting lots of heat. Um, it was a good, very good match overall, probably one of the best matches of the night. <coughs> Three and a half stars, it was also one of the longest, and that match started before the fa first hour, so basically we had five matches within the first hour. I think you know, Team Andrew versus Naptown Dragons ran into the second. Anyway, next we had Wax versus DJ Hyde. Uh, first thing I'll say, this match didn't work as well as they did the one last month, because last month the crowd was a lot louder. Um, you had Brittany, who was kidnapped by DJ Hyde, taped up to the ring post last month, which got a lot of heat. 
and uh, it also re- reminded people of what Wax was, you know, fighting with DJ Hyde over. This was sort of, um, this just didn't live up to the first match. The first match was good. I gave it three and a half stars, but this wasn't just wasn't very memorable and, and wasn't as good as the first one. So I only give it two and a quarter stars. Um, next we'll have we had two girls one cup versus uh, 2.0 but then up in smoke which Cheech, Cheech and Cloudy came out and said they wanted in, in on the match uh, then they got that it was a bit confusing and I don't like f- three way tag matches but I thought it was still um, executed well for what it was I had Brady Lee who were with Cheech and Cloudy at the side um, and turned out to be a good match a bit spotty at the end but three stars and then Brady Lee went nuts and destroyed everyone um, we then went on to Insane Land versus Mickey Knuckles. It was supposed to be Insane Land versus Brain Damage for the Iron Man title. Um, of course, it wasn't. Uh, cause brain Damage couldn't make it to the building. I think he was one of the. Uh, there was a few people who couldn't make it, which is what happens because of weather <coughs> conditions. Um, so we had Mickey Knuckles instead, and this match was quite good uh, as a replacement. It was very intense at some spots and. Uh, some spots I thought fuck that's going to kill somebody um, it was a death match um, so uh, three and a quarter stars pretty good match well, yeah um, and we had fans bring the weapons gauntlet where they continued the storyline of Danny Havoc who uh, was is representing Necro a few years ago versus Hollywood Necro Butcher but he had but he had to go through Shane Storm Freak Show and Ian Rotten I spoiled the surprise um, it was supposed to be a surprise but um it says on the back of the DVD cover. Uh, um, so Ian Rotten came out of retirement, <coughs> and the Necro Butchers, you know, playing heel because he's Hollywood Necro or Dylan Summers or whatever. And they played this video, a weird video, and it went a bit too long, but it was still entertaining but, and sort of weird at the same time. Um, and I'll review next month's one where they do a similar thing. But it was a fan, fans bring the weapons gauntlet. First, you had Danny Havoc versus Shane Storm, where the announcers buried Shane Storm. I don't know why. Shane Storm is. Uh, quite a good wrestler and um, has been wrestling with Chikara who's also a major promotion in the area there maybe there's something going maybe they just wanted to bury him because they wanted to bury Chikara I don't know Shane Storm good guy good wrestler shouldn't have been buried then we had Freak Show they didn't bury him um, and then we went on to Ian Rotten and, and that burial I'll say really pissed me off um, but other than that the announcers were doing a pretty good job for the most of the night uh, then we had Ian Rotten and that, that that was probably the best part of the death match when he came out and started being the hell out of Danny Havoc, and then Danny Havoc, you know, it won eventually. So he got the right to wrestle Necro Butcher. Then he wrestled Necro Butcher, and it was a uh, pretty much just this Necro Butcher picked uh, picked at the bones of Danny Havoc and won the match, continuing his you know Hollywood heel gimmick. Um, but yeah, this was a very good gauntlet and very entertaining. So three and a half stars. Then we had Drake Younger versus Ruckus versus Nick Gage uh, for the CCW World Heavyweight title. This was a good match. You know, you saw some panes of glass and, and, and other hardcore things come into the match. So there was basically only three death matches that I can think of right now that were on this show out of nine nine matches as a whole. Um, but yeah, this was this was a pretty good world title match. It didn't steal a show or anything. Um, I didn't expect it to. It was still a lot of fun to watch, though. Um, three stars. As for the show, was show rating, I'll give it a 7.75. It's a, it was a good show. Um, there was nothing really majorly wrong with it. But there was also nothing really which put it over to that eight, which I you know want to see. Cause, and, and this is the fate of a lot of CZW shows. You don't see any matches which really go above and beyond and deliver something really great like a uh, Cage of Death six did and that delivered so much good stuff that you know it, it, it was just such a good show and that's what these shows need to do to really put them back on the map while the shows are good as a whole they really need to do a lot better like, as, I, as you can probably tell there are no matches while there are no matches below two stars because they're all very good matches there are also no matches above four stars um, and for what they were they were all very good but you know there just needs to be I think you know if you give some of the younger guys more time uh, they could probably deliver a four-star match and really put those shows over, um, especially with like Team Andrew and Naptown Dragons, who are very talented. And you get the Iron Saints in and and work something out, and that that would be really good. Anyway, uh, that's all. I'll come back with another review, maybe of King of Trios 2008, which I'm currently watching. Thanks, bye.